Om Namah Shivaya students. Today we are going to start with the second part of the story, The Open Window. Keep your book open and follow the lesson. Part 2. Mrs. Sappleton comes down at last and inadvertently confirms her niece's story. Frampton tries to acquaint his host with the nature of his ailment. Through the open window he can see things that worsen his nerves. She broke off with a little shudder. It was a relief to Frampton when the aunt bustled into the room with a whirl of apologies for being late in making her appearance. I hope Vera has been amusing you, she said. She has been very interesting, said Frampton. I hope you don't mind the open window, said Mrs. Sappleton briskly. My husband and brothers will be home directly from shooting, and they always come in this way. They have been out for a snipe in the marshes today, so they'll make a fine mess over my poor carpets. So like you main folk, isn't it? She rattled on cheerfully about the shooting and the scarcity of birds and the prospects for duck in the winter. To Frampton, it was all purely horrible. He made a desperate but only partially successful effort to turn the talk onto a less ghastly topic. He was conscious that his hostess was giving him only a fragment of her attention and her eyes were constantly straying past him to the open window and the lawn beyond. It was certainly an unfortunate coincidence that he should have paid his visit on this tragic anniversary. So Mrs. Sappleton enters the room, much to Mr. Nuttle's relief, and asks her guest if Vera has been amusing him. Mrs. Sappleton apologizes to Mr. Nuttle for the open window, remarking that her husband and brothers enter the house that way to avoid dirtying the carpet. Mr. Nuttle is horrified as she rambles on about hunting and he notices that her eyes keep wandering toward the window. He considers it a, an unfortunate coincidence to have visited on such a tragic anniversary. Mrs. Sappleton's entrance breaks the building tension. Her light demeanor sharply contrasts with Vera's story while her preoccupation with the window makes her appear delusional to the newly conned Mr. Nuttle. His pity for Mrs. Sappleton is ironic, given that he is the one being made a fool. So we see that Saki's story also makes frequent use of both situational and dramatic irony. Not only does Vera fool her audience, but the open window fools its readers as well. At first, the reader has no concrete reason to question Mr. Nuttle's perception of events, nor to disbelieve Vera's story. In fact, Mr. Nuttle is initially presented as an observant man. However satirical the open window may be, it is only upon reaching the end of the story when Vera invents a reason for Mr. Nuttle's frantic exit, that the reader can know for certain that Vera has been lying all along. As the author of the internal tale, Vera serves as a sort of stand-in for Saki himself, who not coincidentally grew up in an English country house with his aunts. The open window thus asserts the ability of the fiction to alter one's perception of the world and the tale is ultimately a testament to the power of storytelling. The doctors agree in ordering me complete rest, an absence of mental excitement, an avoidance of anything in the nature of violent physical exercise, announced Frampton, who laboured under the tolerably widespread delusion that total strangers and chance acquaintances are hungry for the least detail of one's ailments and infirmities, their cause and cure. 
On the matter of diet, they are not so much in agreement, he continued. No, said Mrs. Suppleton, in a voice which only replaced a yawn at the last moment. Then she suddenly brightened into alert attention, but not to what Franton was saying. So Mr. Nuttle attempts to change the subject by discussing the intricacies of his own ailments and prescriptions, laboring under the tolerably widespread delusion that total strangers and chance acquaintances are hungry for the least detail of one's ailments and infirmities. Mr. Nuttle, feeling obliged to visit strangers and those strangers feeling obliged to host him, creating the opportunity for and perhaps ensuring awkwardness hidden behind a veil of politeness. The author then further points out the ridiculousness of the situation by showing how these interactions between utter strangers also create the opportunity for deception. Upon learning that the man she has been tasked with greeting is clueless about her family, Vera entertains herself by spinning a tale about her aunt's tragic history, subverting expectations of propriety to satisfy her own decidedly improper ends. Saki mocks those who, like Mr. Nuttles, believe their ailments to be of interest to strangers. Even the proper, polite Mrs. Sappleton appears bored. Here they are at last, she cried. Just in time for tea, and don't they look as if they were muddy up to the eyes? Frampton shivered slightly and turned towards the niece with a look intended to convey sympathetic comprehension. The child was staring out through the open window with a dazed horror in her eyes. In a chill shock of nameless fear, Frampton swung round in his seat and looked in the same direction. In the deepening twilight, three figures were walking across the lawn towards the window. They all carried guns under their arms and one of them was additionally burdened with a white coat hung over his shoulders. A tired brown spaniel kept close at their heels. Noiselessly they neared the house, and then a hoarse young voice chanted out at the dusk, I say, Bertie, why do you bound? So Mrs. Sappleton suddenly brightens to attention to something outside and then excitedly remarks that her brother and husband have arrived just in time for tea. Mr. Nuttle pities her delusion before catching a look of terror on Vera's face. Mr. Nuttle has been completely taken in by Vera and his condescending pity is quietly replaced by fear. Vera continues to act the part of a frightened, innocent girl. Turning to look out of the window himself, Mr. Nuttle sees three men and a dog walking across the yard, one with a white raincoat slung over his arm, and another singing, Bertie, why do you bound? just as in Vera's story. The inclusion of details from Vera's story make Mr. Nuttle think he truly is seeing a pack of ghosts. This scene is one of horror for Mr. Nuttle, relief for Mr. Sappleton, and humor for the reader who knows the end of the tale. So here also we see there are two questions. What did Mrs. Sappleton say about the open window? Mrs. Sappleton said that her husband and her younger brothers had been on a shooting spree and she was expecting them to come back through the window. They always come by that route only. She was waiting for them to come and spoil the deco of the house. The horror on the girl's face made Frampton swing around in his seat. 
What did he see? When Frampton swung around, he saw a silhouette of three men and dog in the evening light. Then a hoarse voice was heard shouting at the dog. I'm ending the class over here today. Thank you students. Namashivaya.